Look at Horsey, it's so cute. I love this little thing. Serena put together some wonderful artwork for it for this video too. It just really spotlights how adorable it is. As a water type, I think that it has a chance of doing quite well in a solo playthrough of Yellow, so let's get into it. Also, remember to check the description if you're interested in the rules or other information. I nicknamed my horsey Ponyta, which will make more sense in the future. And then I faced the rival in the lab to get the opportunity to witness the back sprite for the first time. Honestly, quite bad. <laughs> it sort of looks like its head has been shifted backwards one or two pixels too many. By no means is this the worst back sprite though, it isn't staring into my soul like Porygon was. When I started researching this video, I found a neat piece of trivia, and that's that the Japanese name for horsey actually means dragon's child. It refers to a myth where a seahorse that lives for a century transforms into a dragon. It's interesting to me that this was baked into horsey's design in Generation 1, and then it was fully realized in Generation 2 when Kingra was introduced. But today, it isn't going to have access to that sort of power, especially because it only starts with Bubble. The rest of its moveset, while small, is quite good. As it wasn't meant to be obtained in the early game, it has to wait until level 19 before it learns its next move, which is Smokescreen. As a kid, I thought this move was added in Generation 2, just because so few Pokémon learned it in Generation 1. Only the Coughing, Horsey, and Magmar lines have access to it. One thing that typically holds back Pokémon is not having access to stat-boosting moves, but thankfully, Horsey gets access to Agility at level 37. Through TMs and HMs, it can learn Takedown, Double Edge, Bubble Beam, Waterfall, Ice Beam, Blizzard, Mimic, Bide, Swift, Rest, and Surf. It might be a small moveset, uh, small like Horsey, but it has all the ingredients that it needs for a successful playthrough. The only notable omission, of course, is Body Slam. I really dislike it when Pokémon don't get Body Slam. For base stats, its total is 5 less than Slowpoke, making it rank 5th when compared to all other first stage water types. Funnily enough, it has 10 more than Poliwag, which is the highest ranking first stage Pokemon that I've used to date. Horsey has 30 HP, 40 attack, 70 defense, 70 special, and 60 speed. Its HP and attack are pretty underwhelming, but 70 defense, 70 special, and 60 speed give me a lot of confidence. When I look at Horsey and I see its design, I don't think of it as a defensive Pokemon, but apparently its stats suggest that it is that way. Making this even more true is the fact that it's a monotype, and it only has two weaknesses, to electric and grass. So Surge, and well, maybe Surge, <laughs> and Erika are probably going to be the two harder battles in this playthrough. Although the fact that Horsey has great special does suggest that they might not be that bad. Another thing working for Horsey is the fact that it has a medium fast growth rate, so it won't be slowed down by training. I find it really ironic that Tentacool has a slow growth rate when Horsey, who literally evolves into a dragon type, has a medium fast growth rate. Tentacool deserved better. Because I have access to Bubble, I'll head through the forest towards Brock, skipping the rival on Route 22. In my playthroughs, I make choices that allow me to beat the game as fast as possible with the Pokemon I'm using. So in this case, the fight there would just waste time and it would cause the rival to pick Jolteon, which is likely the hardest evolution for Horsey to defeat. The next obstacle that I was thinking about is not Brock in this case, because I have Bubble, which is a water move, does 4 times damage, he's going to be very easy. But after him, I struggled against Youngster Ben with Poliwag. I'm not looking to run into trouble there again, so I'm going to face some trainers in Viridian Forest just to give Horsey a few more levels. Also, while I'm here, I'd like to catch myself a flyer, but today I get unlucky against Pidgey and it breaks out. By the way, this thing is 100% catch rate when its health is under 41%. Well, not 100%, there is a uh, 1 in 256 chance that you miss, even with a Master Ball in these games. Good job, Gen 1. In this case, I guess Bubble just didn't do quite enough damage to the Pidgey, so I'll have to grab myself a Doduo later on in this playthrough. In Brock's gym, I face the Junior Trainer for a little bit more experience. After all, I have a type advantage over his ground types. However, Bubble is very weak. It's only 20 base power, and after the same type attack bonus, it only comes in at 30 effective power. While Diglett might have the lowest HP of any Pokemon except Shedinja, it still survives Bubble with half health, and I knock it out on the next turn. Santru's next, and Bubble looks like it's going to be a 3 hit. Because this thing only knows Scratch, it consistently attacks and takes Horsey down to low health before I finally knock it out. Alright, I'm really happy that I did that training in the forest, Without it, I probably would have lost here. 
Okay, well, that's out of the way. Now, let's take on Brock. Geodude's first. Horsey's faster, of course, and Bubble gets the one hit. Alright, sweet. Maybe I can one hit the Onyx as well? It outspeeds because it's a speedy snake, and it uses Bide. I use Bubble, and unfortunately it doesn't get the one hit, but it does enough damage that I'm insured to get the KO next turn. That prevents Bide from unleashing its stored damage, and I've won. After the slog that Gyarados had beating Brock, it's really refreshing to be able to beat him this easily. Special damage is quite strong in the early game, and as a result, Horsey has had no issues so far. But Bubble is going to quickly become a liability. We can really see that here against this bug catcher on Route 3, because it takes way too many turns for me to knock out each one of his Pokemon. At least the TM for Water Gun is right inside the entrance for Mount Moon. It's not far away now. First, I have to beat Youngster Ben, uh, also known as the Shorts Guy, and he's quite annoying. First is Rattata. It tail whips, and Bubble looks like it's going to get a 4 hit. Of course, he gets hit with Tail Whip again, allowing Tackle to take it to half just before Rattata goes down. Next is Ekans, and the fact that my defense is lowered is going to make its wrap incredibly powerful. Bubble does what looks like a fifth. Oh no, that's really not looking good. Ekans goes for wrap, which deals three damage per hit. It takes Horsey all the way down to only three hit points remaining. So now I'm going to need a lot of luck. This thing could use Leer, but instead it selects Poison Sting and that knocks Horsey out. Oh, it even uh, got a critical hit just to spite me. Unfortunately, while I was thinking about the power of Shorts Man, I forgot to save in front of him, so this loss sends me back before Brock. By the way, I have so much muscle memory from doing these challenges that immediately upon fainting I just like clicked the reset button and yeah. So now I'm back before Brock. As soon as I did this I realized that I uh, should have just blacked out and walked back over to him. Because then I could just fight him again and I would be a higher level and everything. Mm. Oh well. Usually, I prefer resetting because my rules don't allow me to use my HM mules in battle, so having them faint just feels kind of weird. But in this case, I don't have any because I failed to catch Pidgey. But usually I assume that I have a Pidgey here, so normally this would have been the right choice. Oh well. At least Brock's easy to defeat again. I save in front of Youngster Ben because I'm not confident that I'll win after how things went last time. One thing I have on my side in this fight is that Horsey has a beastly defense stat. Even after taking a single Tail Whip, Rattata's Quick Attack isn't doing too much. But I need all the help that I can get, because being trapped by Raph is just so frustrating. But before that, Rattata just keeps attacking, even getting a critical hit on its last turn in battle. That leaves Horsey with 8 hit points for Ekans. Alright, once again, it is going to take some luck. The game hears me, and Bubble gets a Gen 1 miss. Okay, not the luck that I was looking for. Ekans does miss Raph. Bubble lowers its speed, and while I do survive its next attack, it gets me on the following turn. So once again, a Pokemon only with Bubble breezes past Brock, only to be stopped here on Route 3. I don't want to face him again at this level, so I want to do a little bit of additional training. Just over the ledge underneath him is this lass who has two Pidgeys. I can face her and hopefully gain one more level before I try again. After all, because of damage rounding, Horsey is going to be doing significantly more damage at level 13 than it is at level 12. Her Pidgey are a bit annoying though because they know Sand Attack and Horsey gets hit by two before I knock out her lead. Am I really going to lose to a level 9 Pidgey? It looks like I might. Bubble hits, taking Pidgey to orange. Gust takes me to five hit points, meaning that it will knock me out next turn. And now it all comes down to luck. Please, Sand Attack, don't ruin this for me. Luckily, Bubble hits and I take the victory. However, Horsey doesn't level up. Okay, Youngster Ben, show me what you're made of. I'm hoping that this additional training will give Horsey a level up before the Ekans comes out. And in this case, it does. Okay, I can do this. I know I can do this. Bubble looks like it's doing just over a quarter now. Ekans goes for Leer. It misses its next attack. I take it into red health. And after surviving a poison sting, I knock it out. So the fact that the Shorts guy delayed me here has really given up most of Horsey's time advantage that it earned from Brock. However, it still has a decent time. And then the first Weedle on this bug catcher's team with its first attack, Poison's Horsey. Just great. Like, come on, really? Okay, and that's really bad because I'm running low on bubble. I really should have gone back to Pewter City and let Nurse Joy take care of my PP. The issue now in this fight is that I have to defeat the rest of his Pokemon with Struggle, and unfortunately his last Pokemon is a Metapod. So the Poison and Recoil damage stack up and Horsey goes down again. Okay, so I reset too fast once again, 
And that means that, yes, I have to face Youngster Ben again. This time, though, he isn't an issue, and I backtrack to Pewter City to heal. I really need my PP. Again, in the fight, Weedle poisons me early on, but I have Bubble, and it lets me defeat the Bug Catcher. I'm so excited to have this frustrating portion of the game behind me. Like, I can't express how awful all of this has felt. Horsey's a water type with pretty good stats, so I had high expectations for it. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's really not living up to them right now. I've said before that the most frustrating playthroughs are always the ones that don't live up to expectations. So I'm worried about this one. But I'm hopeful that it's going to get better from here because inside the entrance to Mount Moon, I grab the TM for Water Gun and teach to Horsey immediately. As I go, I run into wild Geodudes and I knock them out because they're really fast experience. After grabbing the rare candy, I decide that I should face some optional trainers. I need to level up a little bit. I would like to have level 19 before Misty so that I'll have access to Smokescreen. After all, I want to defeat her before I head to Nugget Bridge so that I can have Bubble Beam. On the lowest floor of Mount Moon, I grab the Dome Fossil. Uh, I'll hail the Dark Lord, haven't said that in a while. And then after that, I defeat Jesse and James. I stop by Cerulean Mart, pick up the rare candy in someone's backyard. Like, who just like leaves this back there? This is a good item. Go and get it. What are, what are you doing? And then I head to Misty's Gym. By the way, I was just thinking about this, that if I defeat her, I'm going to have like the most 1998 moveset ever, because my horsey is going to have Bubble, Water Gun, and Bubble Beam. The only thing it's missing is like Surf and Hydro Pump. Seriously, as a kid, I really just didn't want to unlearn any moves that were damage dealing. After all, Horsey's a water type, so it should have all the water type moves. And while water type moves are great, they're really not good against this Goldeen. It confuses Horsey and uses Tail Whip lowering my defense. I deal more damage to myself and it just keeps going for Peck. Please stop. Are you kidding me again? All right, okay, so like losing is getting really old. Horsey, can you just please stop? Please! Instead of trying to knock it out with Water Gun, maybe Bide is going to be a better option. This way I can tank those pecks and then pay them all back and just knock it out in one hit. However, when I use Bide, it goes for Supersonic twice. Uh, at least they both missed, I guess that's good. And then on the turn that Horsey unleashes energy, Goldeen, who is slower, uses Peck. Just great, like, <laughs> come on! And then during my next Bide, it uses Tail Whip, Supersonic, and Tail Whips again! The AI is perfectly playing around my bide strategies. Finally, it confuses Horsey, and with minus five defense, the self-inflicted confusion damage KOs. All right, so uh, maybe bide wasn't the best idea. Let's try for water gun again. Things start off looking really good, and then confusion starts to take its toll, but Horsey pulls through and defeats the Goldeen. Finally. But unfortunately, once again, Horsey did not level up at the end of the fight. So I don't have smoke screen. I'll head back to the grass outside of Cerulean City and knock out a couple of wild Pokemon so that I get it. Now, I'm ready for Misty. Star use first, I go for Bide because her good AI is going to force her into using Tackle. The only other move that it has is Water Gun. When Horsey unleashes energy, it takes Staryu to orange, and my next Bide unfortunately doesn't get the knockout, so I finish it off with a Water Gun on the next turn. Having to rely on Bide for Staryu has left me with less than half health, so now I'm going to have to knock this Water Psychic Beast out with not very effective damage. But that's where Smokescreen comes in. I can use it to blind the Starfish and hopefully that'll give me the time that I need. Misty just spams Harden and X Defend over and over while I set up, and then I go for Bide, hoping that she might hit me once and allow me to take Starmie into low red health quickly. Actually, it's better than that because Starmie hits Horsey twice, giving Bide enough damage to take the Starfish to orange health in one hit. Okay, wasn't quite red, but I'll take that. It's time for Water Gun. It does very little, but then Starmie uses Tackle, it hits Horsey, and knocks it out. Are you kidding me? If the AI had used Smokescreen here on me six times, I would have missed every single hit that I attempted. I would have reset, tried again, and still missed. That's how it feels. Ah, it's sometimes. Anyways, okay, let's, let's go. Next battle, I knock the Staryu out with the same amount of health remaining. Please Smokescreen. Do your job this time. Unfortunately, Stormy hits with Tackle, taking Horsey to 13 hit points before I finish my setup. I hit with Water Gun, but Stormy's next Tackle hits and crits. This is giving me flashbacks to when I first started doing Pokemon challenges. Back then, most gym leaders were really rough and I'd reset so many times, way more than I do nowadays. Horsey really doesn't have a move pool that lets it solve these early game fights efficiently. 
Like, it just has no choices. Either weak water moves or nothing. I guess smokescreen and bide. <laughs> ah. I'm going to try this fight one more time, but if I lose again, I should probably go to Nugget Bridge or use a rare candy so that my damage rounding is a little bit better. Unfortunately for me, this time I make it to star me with even less health than I had last time. It goes for tackle right away, taking Horsey to 9 hit points, and it looks like that's it again. The next tackle hits doing massive damage, but Horsey hangs on with 1 hit point. It sort of feels like the game is trying to tease me with a possible victory. It's going to take it away from me at the last moment. I continue my smokescreen setup because the only way that I'll get the win is accuracy-related luck. So is Starmie going to miss enough times? That's one. That's two. Three. Four. Okay, this is going a lot better than expected. The luck continues. Five. Six. And seven. Oh my. Horsey is actually going to do it. Water Gun hits Starmie and knocks it out. What was that? I honestly think this might be one of the luckiest fights I've ever had. Well done, Smokescreen. Well done. My prize for defeating her is Bubble Beam, and it really helps against the rival. It makes his entire team trivial. It feels good to have an easy battle. Too much of this early game has been a struggle. On the rest of Nugget Bridge, Horsey continues to build momentum through the power of Bubble Beam. Things get close against this Mankey, but Horsey still pulls through. As I near the end of the route, I decided to face some optional trainers, specifically because the last mandatory trainer is a lass who has two Oddish. I call her the Oddish Lass. Uh, it's a really creative name. <laughs> Without access to a damage dealing normal type move, I'm going to have to defeat these grass types with either Bide or Bubble Beam. I went into this fight and decided to play quite conservatively using Smokescreen to set up. The thing is, I'm overleveled enough that Bubble Beam can actually take the Oddish out in two hits. The following Pidgey is a 1 hit, and the final Oddish would have been a 2 hit if it didn't get a chance to heal with Absorb. Either way, I'm moving on. At the start of this video, I mentioned that Surge and Erica would likely be the hardest portions of the game for Horsey. And I'm really hoping that I'm wrong about that after how everything has gone until now. The momentum that I've built over this last small stretch really makes me feel good. Please can that just keep going? It does through the next major obstacle, which is the junior trainer with three Pidgeys. Bubble Beam one hits each member of her team, preventing her from setting up any sand attacks. I haven't decided if I want to face Lieutenant Surge before or after Rock Tunnel yet, so I grab the bike voucher just in case. Then I stop by the restroom on the SSN to grab my favorite TM. The seaman here challenges me to a battle first, and he has a Tentacool and a Staryu. I'm not expecting him to be very challenging, he never is. I'm so confident that I don't even heal going into the fight. Bubble Beam does half to Tentacool with a critical hit, that's nice. And then the Jellyfish uses Acid, which crits and additionally lowers Horsey's defense. That's not nice. Bubble Beam takes Tentacool to red, and then Supersonic confuses. And Horsey hits itself. Tentacool hits with Acid, and then Horsey gets the knockout. On itself. Well, there goes all the momentum that I was building. Oh, the uh, last place that I saved was in front of the Pidgey Junior Trainer, so that's a decent amount of time that was lost as a result. In my Poliwag video, I got a comment that I should really save in front of every important battle, and I'll have you know, I do. I did not think that the Seaman, I, I mean the Sailor, would be such a sticky situation for Horsey. In the rematch, I am able to take the victory and grab my reward, Rest. Unfortunately, as I mentioned at the start, Horsey doesn't learn Body Slam, so I skip that room, fight the optional gentleman to get the rare candy, and then I smash my way through the rival's team. With him out of the way, it's time to decide if I want to face Surge now or later. As of late, he's been performing very poorly, so I think that I'll be able to beat him without backtracking. Let's try. The strategy here is to use Smokescreen to hopefully make Raichu miss Thunderbolt. That'll give me the time that I need to knock it out with Bubble Beam. I'm doing about a third each hit. Okay, I take that back, it looks like it's doing about a quarter. Raichu continues to miss, and as a result, I knock it out. I can't believe how many of these fights against him I make it through just because of his terrible AI. If he had good AI, so many Pokemon would be just walled here. Water types, flying types, it would be brutal. With him out of the way, I think that the road is clear for Horsey. I can skip Erica until just before Giovanni, and that way I can make it through the mid-game and upgrade my moveset without any major hurdles. Oh yeah, I, uh, I do have to defeat the Wrapping Lass first. Well, I should save before her because she has a bunch of grass types. Oddish is first. I go for Bubble Beam because it's the best choice that I have, 
and it does one third. Oddish retaliates with Stun Spore, Paralyzing Horsey, and cutting its speed. This is why I call her the Wrapping Lass, because now the following Bellsprout can use Wrap and potentially trap my Pokemon indefinitely. This isn't a guaranteed loss though, because the Bellsprout could miss with Wrap, or it could use Growth. And here I need to bring your attention to a fun Generation 1 glitch. When Bellsprout uses Growth, the game recalculates the speed drop caused by Horsey's Paralysis, so in this case, Growth is both raising Bellsprout's special and lowering my speed. This ends up leaving Horsey with only one speed. By the way, that is the lowest possible value. By the way, you can actually use this glitch on the opponent by causing paralysis and then using a stat altering move to recalculate their speed. For me, there's never been a situation where this was impactful for me in a playthrough, but it's fun to know about. It has actually shown up in previous videos, so if you've been watching attentively, you will have seen it, specifically in Coughing and Poliwag but I noticed it too late in the production process of those, so I didn't have a chance to add a line to mention it. In regular gameplay, it's also quite hard to notice, because after the speed cut from Paralysis, the opponent is usually moving first anyways, so having your speed lowered again and again doesn't have a material impact on the battle. Today, it's just a neat factoid to discuss while Horsey gets knocked out again. I really shouldn't have assumed that it was home free. I'm gonna need to do more training before I take her on again. I head back through the tunnel towards Vermilion City and start facing trainers that I skipped here for experience. After that, I head to Diglett's Tunnel and train on wild Pokemon there. After all, they're easy to knock out with my water type moves, and the Doug Trio here gives significant experience. Also, when I'm done training, I can easily dig back to Cerulean City, saving a bunch of walking time. Alright, Horsey is level 31 now, 4 levels higher than last time. This should be enough. Right? Bubble Beam does half to Oddish, uses Absorb, skipping its scarier status moves, and then I knock it out with a critical hit Bubble Beam. Bellsprout's next, and with my speed intact, I should be able to take it out. Unless it puts me to sleep. Well, she uses Wrap and that gives me time to wake up. After that, I'm able to knock it out, but this isn't over, because she has another Oddish, and it could use Stun Spore. Of course, it does, and so once again, Horsey is paralyzed for the following Bellsprout. Watch the speed, here's the glitch again, because Bellsprout uses growth, and it gets lowered all the way back to 1. While my speed being cut is funny, it's also bad because growth is raising its special, meaning that Bubble Beam is going to take longer and longer to knock it out. I'm really not doing much damage anymore. Still, I managed to hit it just enough times and I defeat her. This fight is not going to be fun to optimize. Horsey is definitely just going to need more levels, maybe even agility? I hope not. Well, it's good to have her behind me. She's normally a random NPC. I never thought much of her when I was a kid. But uh, yeah, <laughs> anyways, that's, that's over. I made the mistake last time of saying that Horsey was gonna start having an easier time. And I'm not gonna say that now. After all, Rock Tunnel usually has at least one trainer that's tricky to defeat. Today, the Pokemaniacs aren't the issue, but the status condition junior trainer just might be. Bubble Beam takes her Oddish to Orange Health, it uses Absorb, which doesn't do much, and I finish it off. Oh, never mind, it survives because my first hit was a crit. Oddish puts Horsey to sleep and starts to attack with Absorb. Alright, please wake up. Please. Are you kidding me? I'm just not going to? It's actually going to knock me out? Normally in these playthroughs, I anticipate certain trainers being challenges and I save before them. All the other ones I just fight. But for Horsey... It would have been more accurate to just assume that each trainer was going to be the next possible reset. In the next battle, Oddish paralyzes me, but I take it down and move on to the Bulbasaur. Here, we get to witness the paralysis speed modification again when Bulbasaur uses Growl. Yes, it lowers my attack correctly, but also lowers my speed. Bubble Beam does what looks like one third, Bulbasaur hits with Vine Whip, and that takes Horsey to red. Okay, so on the next turn, it finishes me off. Ah. Uh... I'm so frustrated by these losses. Two losses to the status condition junior trainer, and 11 resets overall, and I haven't even made it to the mid game. This is really not a good start. If you just showed me the time and told me that I was in Rock Tunnel, I might assume that I was playing a poison type. I do manage to take her out on the next attempt though, and of course the self-destructing hiker is an easy battle. Fortunately, the junior trainer at the end of the tunnel is no different as well. So, I've made it to Celadon City, at long last. With how things are going, I don't think it makes any sense to skip the rocket hideout today. I want the extra items, money, and rare candy. I also stopped by this rocket so that I can obtain the TM for Double Edge, 
By the way, there's actually a hidden nugget next to this TM, but I didn't know that it was there while I was filming this video. I filmed this like two months ago, by the way. It would have been really nice to grab it for the extra money, but oh well, not today. In the department store, I teach horsey ice beam and I buy three calciums. Normally, I pick up Carbos at this point, but since agility is only three levels away, it makes more sense to raise my special. Now, it's time to catch myself a flyer because I was unlucky and didn't get one in Viridian Forest. I run into Doduo, which is great because this thing has fewer moves so it can learn fly faster than the Spiro that also show up here, but apparently, it really just doesn't want to get into the ball. Please. Okay, uh, this time I didn't run out of PP, I ran out of balls. So I have to head back to the department store and buy some more. When I come back, the game is just like, no, 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 you can't have a flyer, because I run into Rattata and Raticate before I finally run into a Spiro. Despite it being an easier catch than Doduo, it breaks out of not one, not two, but three great balls. I only have one left. This has been brutal so far. Please, can I just have a little bit of luck right now? And finally, the great ball catches it. I fly back to Lavender Town, head south to obtain Swift, which is going to be very useful later on, and then I dispatch the rival easily. After him, the first Chandler in the tower is typically a pain point for many Pokemon. This is because she can troll you with Confuse Ray, Lick, and Nightshade. But Horsey makes it through the fight on its first attempt. At the top of the tower, Jesse and James aren't a threat, and things are starting to feel better. I grab the rare candy and the PP up on Cycling Road, and the Carbos in the Safari Zone. I teach Surf right away, sometimes it can be a bad choice if the Pokemon needs to have a more flexible moveset later on in the game, but I don't see a reason why Horsey would want to get rid of Surf. I head back to Celadon City, and my choices now are to face Erika, Koga, or head to Sylph. I think the last one of these options is the best, because I can spend some time training. Plus, Sylph has three vitamins and a rare candy that I can collect on my way. After leveling up to 37, Horsey learns agility, and then at level 38 I figure maybe I can defeat the rival. Let's give it a try. After all, if I can get him out of the way, then I can get into Sabrina's gym, and I'd rather face her than Erica or Koga at this point. Sand Slash is first, and Surf takes it out in a single hit. Because the rival has good AI in this fight, the Cloister can only use Supersonic against Horsey, so I can use this time to set up agility and boost my stats for the remaining fight. Because I only have the Boulder Badge and Thunder Badge at this point, the badge boosts are only being applied to my attack and defense though, and this could be a problem because Magneton's next. I really would have liked a special boost for it. I try for Ice Beam in the hopes that it would freeze. It doesn't. Magneton does over half. Surf does about the same amount as Ice Beam, and that's it. Instead of heading somewhere else, I think that I can just train a few more levels and attempt again. At level 41, I get lucky and Ice Beam crits Magneton. Of course, he survives Thundershock, and I knock it out. Cadaver's next, and I have Swift on my moveset just so that I can manage it. Unfortunately, I only do half, but it uses Disable, and so I take it out the next turn. Flareon, his ace, is last. Surf connects, the fire type survives, uses bite, but it isn't strong enough, and I've won. Defeating the self rival is always great because my Pokemon gets the experience from Jesse and James and Giovanni before I head to the next gym leader. After that, I grab Mimic from Copycat, and then I head into Sabrina's gym. The reason that I want to fight her next is because I think that she's basically going to be a free fight. A few videos ago I figured out that I could use a setup move in combination with Abra's Flash to set up the badge boost between 9 and 12 times. In this case, 9 times since I can only use agility 3 times. This is all made possible by the fact that Swift bypasses accuracy checks, allowing it to hit even if my accuracy has been lowered. Unfortunately, Horsey levels up as soon as it knocks the Abra out, so this resets all of the boosts. But I do manage to get to the Alakazam, and then it finishes me off. I could use a rare candy to prevent the level up, but it's a first playthrough so I want to be safe. I head back into the gym and fight an optional trainer to level up before facing her again. This time things go according to plan and I'm victorious. I make a pit stop for some more vitamins and then I go to Erica's gym. I think she's going to be easy to defeat at this level with Ice Beam. I specifically want to get the victory here so I can get the Rainbow Badge and use Strength. That way I can pick up the Warden's Rare Candy after I finish Koga. This saves a small amount of time in the overworld, and if I can optimize like this, I want to. Turns out Erica's easy, so I'm heading to Fuchsia City to face Koga. Okay, so the problem in this fight is that he has good AI, and Venonats 1 and 3 have Sleep Powder. Since it's a grass move, they're always going to use it against me first turn. And that means Horsey's going to get put to sleep. As a result, it's taken into the orange before I take the first member of Koga's team out. 
The next one uses Toxic, so that's a loss. Let's try again. And I want you all to check this out. In the next fight, my first Surf gets a critical hit and knocks Venonat out right away. Okay, no Sleep Powder, that's really good. His second Venonat comes out and once again Surf crits. So yeah, sweet, that's some great luck. Unfortunately, it doesn't continue because the third one is just a regular hit and Venonat survives. He uses Sleep Powder and... Oh wait, never mind, the luck does continue because it misses and I knock it out. So all that's left is Venomoth. This fairy type is usually quite challenging to defeat. But it goes for Toxic first turn, which isn't the best choice. Surf crits for more than half, Leech Life does very little, and I knock it out on the next turn. So that was a really lucky fight. Nice. With the Soul Badge, I have access to Surf outside of battle, and I head to Cinnabar Island. I grab the usual items in the mansion, including Blizzard, two rare candies, and the gym key so that I can face Blaine. Now, I've said this many times before, but he's not always easy when you have a water type, because his Pokemon have both special and physical moves. They're very balanced. Unfortunately, he doesn't have good AI, and in this case it allows Ninetales to use Flamethrower on Horsey, which inflicts a burn. I find it strange that a water type can be burnt, like, does that make sense? Yeah, I guess fish could be burnt, like, but could they be burnt when they're underwater? I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, let me know in the comments. Someone will be like, yes, of course. There's this like phenomenon that happens and it burns fish all the time. Okay, let's move on. At least I crit Rapidash and take it out in a single turn. All that's left is Arcanine. I use Surf and once again, get another critical hit. I cannot believe the number of these that I've got in the last two fights. They've allowed me to win against both Koga and Blaine now. The only gym leader left is Giovanni. He leads with Doug Trio. I'm exposed to Fissure on the first turn because I'm slower, but after setting up Agility once, it won't work anymore. Now that I'm moving first, I go for Surf and knock his lead out. Persian's next. Surf takes it to Orange, and then a massive Slash crits, taking Horsey down to two hit points. Oh dear. Now I need to be able to one-hit both the Nidoqueen and the Nidoking in order to be able to win. If I don't, they're going to use Thunder, and that could be really bad. Luckily, the first one goes down in a single hit, but sometimes the Nidoking survives because it's two levels higher. In this case, it doesn't, and all that's left is Rhydon. The only way I can lose now is with a Gen 1 miss. Please not again, like happened with Bubble earlier on. Luckily, it doesn't happen, and Horsey wins. It's pre-league rival time. He leads with Sandslash, and I take it out right away with Surf. Next is Execute, and Ice Beam gets the job done. Following that is Cloyster, and like the previous fight, I can set up Agility here because it's only going to use Supersonic. However, I don't have a good answer for the Magneton because Surf only does half, and it paralyzes me with Thunder Wave. It's ironic now that after setting up fully with Agility and then getting its speed cut, Horsey only has 117 speed. That means it has one less speed than the following Kadabra. It moves first and gets a massive crit with Psybeam, taking Horsey to red. Because of paralysis, I don't move first, and that's it. I tried again, this time I actually freeze the Magneton, which is really lucky. Okay, this is gonna be it. Kadabra reflects, but then it starts spamming Recover over and over, and I can't knock it out fast enough with Swift. The first time it uses Psybeam, it confuses Horsey, causing self-inflicted damage, and then it crits with Psychic, and that's it. It's really painful losing out on the luck in a fight like this, like when you freeze a pivotal Pokemon like the Magneton. Oh well, let's try this Kadabra again. This time, I'm paralyzed and it hits a massive Psychic, and that knocks Horsey out right away. Instead of hitting my head against this wall over and over, I'm going to go train up a little bit more. After all, if I have just one more speed, I'll be tied with the Kadabra, and if I have two more, then I'll be able to move first. While I was training, I thought about my strategy, and I actually figured out a better approach to this battle. So I head back to Route 22 to face the rival again. I teach Horsey Mimic in the place of Swift, and here's how I'm going to use it. When I get to Cloister, I can Mimic Clamp. After setting up Agility, I can use Clamp to trap Magneton and take it out before it can paralyze or use Thundershock. I use the same plan against Kadabra. Unfortunately, Clamp doesn't have the best accuracy, so I miss and get hit. However, it comes through after that, and I take the Psychic type out. All that's left is Flareon, and obviously, it's no match for Horsey. So I've made it all the way to the League. I have to say, this playthrough has gone way worse than I expected. I thought that Horsey was going to do significantly better than this. The early game was especially surprising and painful, but luckily things are getting more and more smooth as the game progresses. Can Horsey sustain this momentum now, 
Or do the members of the League have something up their sleeve to stop it? Let's find out. Lorelai's first, and her dugong presents a threat for Horsey. It might be the case that my surf can't take the frozen seal out in three hits. If that's true, then Rest has the ability to stall me out indefinitely. Luckily for me, after setting up agility three times and boosting my special, I'm able to three-shot the dugong. Cloister's next, and this thing doesn't have particularly high special, so I'm able to manage it without issue. Now it's time for Slowbro. The strategy here is my typical one, which is Mimic Amnesia and set it up. Unfortunately, throughout the battle I've accumulated too much damage, so the Slowbro is able to take me down. There is obviously an easy fix here. By teaching Horsey Rest, I'll be able to heal after setting up Amnesia, so then with my boosted special, I'll take less damage and be able to knock it out. Jinx comes out next, but it stalls me hard enough that I run out of PP. So I decided to reset, I really don't want to have to get through this with struggle. This way it will be faster. Because I saved most of my rare candies, I can use 7 of them now. This takes Horsey up to level 60, and now Lorelai is going to be very straightforward to defeat. Next, uh, check this guy out. He has a Machamp. That's cool. Agatha's next. She's an intimidating second member of the League. For her, I use my typical strategy, Substitute, Rest, Agility, and Surf. Substitute prevents Confuse Ray, Agility allows me to set up, and Rest ensures that I won't lose because I can heal if things start to go south. In this case, they don't. Horsey is really shredding the late game. For Lance, I remove Mimic in favor of Blizzard, and then I realize that I don't really have a good move choice against the Gyarados. I decide to set up Agility so that I can knock it out with Blizzard and Surf. It uses two Leers, lowering my defense, and then Hyper Beam hits Horsey, taking it down to red health. Okay, so I think I really should have been trying for Blizzard Freezes here, at least on the first turn. I do that in my next attempt, and unfortunately, Gyarados doesn't get frozen. However, it has no idea what it's doing, and after using Leer two times, lowering my defense, it decides to use Dragon Rage, which I'll have you know, is a fixed damage move. Ah, uh, good job, Lance. With his lead out of the way, I just need Blizzard to hit his remaining Pokemon. It connects with both Dragonairs, taking each out in a single hit. Aerodactyl's next. Of course, using Surf makes more sense here. Because of agility, I'm also faster, so I can take it out easily. Dragonite's the last Pokemon. Blizzard hits, and that's it. It's champion time. Now, if you watched my Gyarados video last week, you'll know the champion very frequently walls water types with his electric Pokemon. Both Magneton and Jolteon are scary opponents to go up against. I think that Magneton is a little bit worse just because Thunderbolt is 100% accurate, whereas Jolteon's Thunder is only 70% accurate. However, in this case, I don't get the chance to fight it because Alakazam's Psybeam confuses, Blizzard isn't doing that much, and then I use Surf, which is not doing very much more than Blizzard, and that leads to my first loss. Okay, let's try this again with one badge boost against the Sandslash. Maybe then I'll two-shot the Alakazam. Apparently, it's not quite enough, and Alakazam just barely survives. I do manage to take it out, and Executor's next. Rest and Blizzard here make this easy. It's a great stop to heal up before the final members of his team, especially in this case because it's only going to spam Leech Seed because of my typing. I knock the Pineapple Tree out, and then it's time for Magneton. I go for Blizzard, and in this case it freezes! Yes! <laughs> okay, so that's really sweet. I had so much bad luck last week. This is much better. Cloister's next, and Surf takes it out in three hits. After that, Flareon's all that remains, and I finish it off with Surf. Horsey clocks in with a real time of 1 hour, 29 minutes, and 4 seconds, with 24 resets at level 65 in 4 hours and 42 minutes of game time. To summarize Horsey's playthrough, it really felt brutal in the early game and then extremely lucky in the late game. Crits on Koga, Blaine, and a freeze on the champion don't make me confident in these results repeating. So let's do some testing. I want to check these trainers. Youngster Ben, Misty, the Wrapping Lass, the Sylph Rival, and of course the champion. First up is the shorts man himself, Youngster Ben. And when I recorded this video, which was on June 7th, I thought that his name was Youngster Joey, uh, but Youngster Joey is actually from Johto. My goal with testing here is I want to be in a place where I'm confident that I'm pretty much always going to win with Bubble. If in Viridian Force I fight the Lass and an additional bug catcher, then Horsey is going to defeat Barak and be level 12 heading out onto Route 3. After the mandatory bug catcher in front of youngster Ben, I'm now level 13. Now against him, I'm pretty confident in my abilities to win. Obviously there's no strategy here, it's just spam bubble, so what win-loss ratio does this give me? 
Surprisingly, I won 10 fights in a row. There were two close calls where Horsey survived with one hit point left, but overall for the early game, I think that this is good enough. If I can skip training against wild trainers, I might as well. Let's move on to the next section. The Goldian trainer in Misty's gym was pretty annoying, but I want to solve Misty first because I think I'll need a higher level for her. This means more training in Mount Moon, and then a higher level for the Goldian trainer as well. There are some obvious choices for trainers to battle here, the Youngster and the Hiker, which I did before, also the Rocket and the Super Nerd, as well as Jesse and James, they're all mandatory. Fighting these trainers as I did last time will yield a result of level 18 at the end of the cave. So maybe after all, maybe I don't need to train anymore. What if I just use Smokescreen against Misty instead of trying to rely on Bide? Well, first of all, I just want to say that testing this is pretty tedious, because it takes a while to get set up. I figured out that while I was testing, I want to set up completely with Smokescreen instead of using like 3 or 4. I also experimented with attacking first with Bubble to lower the opponent's speed. After all, it has a 33% chance to do that. However, after a couple fights, I questioned this strategy's efficacy and decided to just go for Water Gun right away. So how consistent is full setup with Smokescreen into Water Gun? Well, by doing this, Horsey gets a result of 7 wins and 3 losses, so I think that's good enough. Now, the next choice is should I face Surge before Rock Tunnel or backtrack to him later? If I do, I might have a better chance of surviving Thunderbolt. However, this question really hinges on the fact that the Wrapping Lass is the next major hurdle for Horsey. So what level do I need to get by her? When I'm on the SSN, I can do some additional training resulting in a higher level. My goal is to two hit all of her Pokemon, because three hits is far too risky. Level 31 isn't enough because Absorb heals the Oddish. Level 32 is not over the damage rounding threshold, so it makes little difference, but level 33 gives me consistent two hits. This fight still doesn't inspire confidence because Oddish can paralyze me, but this is probably the most realistic solution without training all the way to level 37 for agility. That seems like overkill. Just because I'll be leveling to 33 before fighting the Wrapping Lass, I do think that taking on Surge right away makes the most sense. After all, he's pretty bad. Now it's time for the Sylph Rival. I thought that level 41 might be a good level because Horsey can survive two Thundershocks at full health. After all, this is the level I won at before. However, in testing I immediately lost twice and it was really discouraging. I actually started to get some seal flashbacks. I'm like, am I going to be able to make this Horsey playthrough consistent? I'm not sure. It sort of feels like the inverse of seal. Seal was like fine throughout most of the game and then it got to the champion just like couldn't do it consistently. Whereas Horsey was like, oh, the early game was just awful and then the late game felt pretty good. I was worried in these tests that this might be the case for this cute little seahorse. But let's keep going, and I think that I can do it. I, I have faith. Instead of finishing the tests against the rival here in Sylph, I think I should go to the champion first and then work back and figure out what the optimal level would be for this fight. So last time I froze Magneton, and I really can't bank on that again. So how do I defeat him without the status condition? Well, what if I mimic Earthquake from Sandslash? Using agility at the current level won't give me the damage ranges that I need to one-hit it, so that only solves Magneton if I also level up more. Also, when you use agility after being paralyzed, it resets the speed reduction from status conditions, but this won't let me take the Magneton out faster. If I mimic Earthquake from Sandslash, then I'm going to have to give up Blizzard Rest or Agility. Giving up Rest feels pretty bad for the champion, I can't heal against Executor in that case, or against Cloyster when it uses Spike Cannon with Leech Seed. Agility is giving my current damage ranges, so Blizzard is the obvious choice to let go of. Even with full setup, Earthquake doesn't always one-hit the Magneton when Horsey is at level 71. This is a combination of Magneton having good defenses and Horsey not having very good attack. So this is rough. Horsey is really struggling with consistency here. I have solutions I'm fairly happy with for the early game, but the champion is resisting me. I tried movesets that include Toxic, Smokescreen, and Hydro Pump, and none were better. Here's the thing though, Earthquake does sometimes one-hit the Magneton. So I'll try my second playthrough, aiming for a champion finish at level 70 or 71. This pushes me over the damage rounding threshold, and I will hopefully get to one hit the Magneton. So let's do this. For the early game, I do my extra training, and this lets me defeat Youngster Ben on the first attempt. Specifically in Mount Moon, I do a little bit extra training, and I have Smokescreen for Misty. I adjust my strategy so that I don't use Bide, and that way I'm able to win on my first attempt. 
Now, this is where the playthrough fundamentally changes, because I'm not making so many mistakes, I have no resets so far, and I'm also not going to backtrack. I can just do training on the SSN and grind on some Diglett once I'm done. After that, I'm level 35 and I decide to face Surge. Unfortunately, Thunderbolt still one hits Horsey on my first attempt, like, ah, he just used the right move this time. So, oh well. But I take him out in the next attempt. The Wrapping Lass is next, and even at this level, level 36, which is like an absurd amount of overleveling, she still defeats me in my first battle. Luckily, I'm able to defeat her on the next fight. With the goal level being 70, this helps me outspeed the Alakazam, and also sometimes one-hit the Magneton, I'm also going to do a lot of training in the mid-game. The advantage of this is that it also gives me much more money. I can use it to buy 6 vitamins when I get to the department store, which is 3 more than last time. Because of my overleveling, I'm able to defeat Erica and the Sylph rival with ease. Now, when I did my testing, sometimes I decide not to face trainers because I think that my training or my rooting is going to make them much easier. In this case, I thought that Kogo was going to be fine, after all I'm 3 levels higher. I felt that this was going to be enough, but he gets me. This results in not one, not two, but three losses. At this point, I decided to backtrack to Sabrina and defeat her first because I have the agility swift strategy. She's an easy win this time, and then I come back for Koga and defeat him. Blaine performs much better than he did last time. I figured this fight didn't need too much thought because Horsey is after all a water type. Still, Blaine almost manages to win, but Horsey pulls through without a reset. I guess Ponyta is actually better than its evolution Rapidash in this case. I train in Giovanni's gym against trainers, and then use rare candies to ensure that I'll move first against his Persian. This allows me to take a first attempt victory against him as well. From here, the battles are pretty much unchanged. I manage to defeat the pre-league rival without a reset, I teach rest for Lorelei and win against her, and then, obviously, Agatha is next. Um, yeah, it's easy. So I've arrived at Lance. This time, I have to forego using Blizzard because I want to keep Mimic for the champion. This has a profound effect on the Lance battle, though. Now, I'm going to need luck to get past Gyarados. Granted, I needed luck before, too, so that's why I felt this was an acceptable trade-off. Gyarados cooperates by not using Hyper Beam too much, and I manage to knock it out. The first Dragonair paralyzes Horsey, however, with agility, this is a net neutral exchange in terms of speed, so I'm still moving first. I Mimic Ice Beam, and I finish the Dragon Master off. Now, how will Horsey do against the champion? I Mimic Earthquake, and then I knock Sandslash out with Surf. Surf knocks the champion's lead out, and next is his Psychic type. Okay. I use Earthquake, it survives using Recover, which makes it just barely survive my next hit. That gives it time to go for Psychic, which finishes Horsey off. Of course, because it got a critical hit. Alright, that was unlucky, let's try again. Next, my Earthquake almost KOs the Alakazam, it fails Kinesis, and then I take it out. Executor's free, obviously, so it's time for the Magneton. Please just get the one hit. It does. And with that, the fight is secured unless Cloyster crits or something, it has been known to do that. In this case though, it doesn't, and Flareon's an easy knockout. Horsey clocks in with a real time of 1 hour, 19 minutes, and 41 seconds, with 6 resets at level 71 in 5 hours and 2 minutes of game time. So let's compare the results. So I finished the game just under 10 minutes faster, with 18 less resets, albeit 6 levels higher, with 20 more minutes of game time. Of course, real time is the most accurate metric here, so I'm pretty happy with this improvement. But was it enough to earn Horsey a good ranking against the other first stage water types? It's slower than Poliwag and Tentacool, but faster than Goldeen and Seal. So because of that, it earns itself third place, which is a pretty good performance considering how tough this run really was. Now, let's rank it overall in my complete tier list. By the way, I've removed all the older runs so we have more space now. Also, it's nice to look at only the most up-to-date info. For this ranking, I use exclusively real-time unless two Pokemon are extremely close and need to tie-break. In those cases, I'll use the other metrics. Horsey today earns itself a place in the B tier, just behind Aerodactyl and in front of Hitmonchan. Like, subscribe, ring the chime echo, and leave a comment because I gotta read them all. Thanks to my patrons for their support. If you've made it this far, you're incredible. Now, it's bloopers time. Making this more true is the fact that it's a monotyke Tyke. Ah, uh, huh, come on. <laughs> However, first I have to beat Youngster. However, I almost said Youngster Joey. It's not Youngster Joey. Youngster Joey is the only Youngster, actually, and then there's Shorts Guy. I should probably just call Youngster Ben Shorts Guy, uh, so everyone knows who I'm talking about. This time I shave <laughs> shave in front of the Master of the Shorts. Yes, exactly that. So that Shorts Man has an Ekans. Let's just let that sink in. All right. <laughs>
Okay, youngster Ben, show me what you're made of. I'm hoping that this addition, uh, additional, additional training, yes, additional training. So the poison's damage, so the poison damage stacks up and horsey goes, so the poison, sh poison damage. When horsey unleashes, unleashes, unleashes energy. Now, I haven't decided if I want to face Lieutenant Surge before or after Rock Tunnel. So I grab the bike voucher just in case I want to head back to Cerulean for, uh, first. This ends up leaving Horsey with one... What am I saying? It's like swallowing the microphone or something. This fight is not going to be fun to optimize. I think that Horsey just has to level up. Like, maybe it needs agility to be able to confis consistently defeat her. Oh. After all, Rock Tunnel usually has at least one trainer that's a tricky that's a tricky defeat. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's what I wrote. After all, Rock Tunnel you Rock Tunnel -y. Yes, Rock Tunnel -y. This line, I'm incapable of saying this line. <laughs> oh my gosh. Now it's time to catch myself a flyer because I was unlucky and didn't get one. <laughs> no. Please don't be another one of those lines. If in Viridian Forest I fight one additional bug caster bug caster yes that's what it is now the next choice is should i face surge before rock tunnel but really that question comes down to what level do i need to beat the wrapping lass comma oh my gosh my like voice to text software brain took over there for a moment <laughs> just like said comma randomly just like comma like no 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 don't say the comma <laughs> oh dear i'm so excited to have this frustrating i'm so excited to have this frustrating portion of the game behind that that is gonna be one of those bloopers that's just like completely out of context. I'm just like reading a line that blah, 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 and then it's just like that's it. I like slightly flub one word and it's just like no no I can't do that and I just make a weird sound. I might freeze. Okay, at least that does half. I'm gonna set up the rest of the way here because this thing is the least threatening of his team members. Maybe Arcanine, but the takedown from the Arcanine is the thing that gives me pause. Uh, okay, so that was a little bit risky, but. Sometimes you gotta go for it. Okay, now I'll knock it out. Oh, please don't miss again, please. Um, I don't know if I wanna heal here. I think I'll just take it out and then try Blizzard against the Venusaur. It might freeze. Oh, crit, well that's sweet. Okay, I could freeze this. Nope. Okay, Hyper Beam, so I get two Surfs. Yes, <laughs> did it. All right, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I'll see you in my next one.